line, all with your safety in mind. However you choose to join us, this autumn edition has got you covered with a wide range of events, including one of the largest outdoor installations ever seen in Ireland. This September and October in Galway City and County. See GIAF.ie for details. Supported by the Arts Council, Fulcher Ireland, Galway 2020, NUI Galway and Flowgas. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power A more electric team-up than Salah and Mane Gamble responsibly, see Dunleary.net Hi, uh, Nevin, hello How are you doing? How are you doing? You well? Tired. My head is spinning Can't make sense of everything that's going on We last spoke during PSG Atalanta It feels like six months ago in terms of footballing <laughs> stories, my God, a lot has happened. Oh, wow. It's, um, do you know where you're sort of, it's a word I hate, but the word pundit, I hate it anyway. But when you're a pundit, people ask you to guess what's going to happen. And you're like, <laughs> and then you look at what happens in the Champions League and you go, no, no one can guess that. That's just mentalness. Um, I mean, particularly the Barca. And then watching the, what Manchester City done against Leon, honestly, head and hands. 10 minutes in, just like, a, what are you doing, Pep? Um, the madness surrounding it is, is kind of unbelievable. It's, it's, it feels like people are almost deliberately shooting themselves in the foot. Mm. It, it gets that bad, some of the same with some of these games. And I know some of the teams are a bit tired, and particularly the British teams are tired, you know, United City at the end of the season. But I, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving the City that one. I'm absolutely not giving them it. Because they've known for a long time they're not going to win the Premier League. So they had the opportunity to rest people. They weren't going to miss out on the top four. They had the opportunity. So they can't use that as an excuse. Um, I was just, I'm actually dead disappointed. I don't know about you. Really disappointed. Go and watch. I've seen the City a lot this season. And then they turn up and do that. And it's all, all my dreams are getting destroyed here. You know, like Barca, you know, falling apart the way they did. And it's kind of been ha ready to go for a while. And, and it's just finally happened. And then City, when just when they need to turn up, they don't turn up. And there's two teams I love watching, but uh, what, do you know what I hope doesn't happen? I really hope people don't say, oh, well, that was just all these way how to play football. We're going in a diff different direction now. Uh, you know, because that, that worked for a while, didn't it? It sure but did. At the moment, you suspect so. in Man City's case it might still have worked if they hadn't abandoned it in part. How do you explain Pep's thought process here, the best we can come up with when we were chatting just before you came on was that he is now ascribing such importance to these Champions League knockout games and they mean so much to him that all, he, he almost can't believe it's as simple as going out and doing what they've done for the last two, three, four years, that he has to retreat into a room and come up with some ingenious tactical piece of brilliance, masterstroke, which will catch everyone unawares and this will somehow guarantee safe passage through to the next round. Because we're talking about a team seventh in Ligue 1. They've lost nine times in 26 French League games. If he was playing seventh in the Premier League, he'd just go out and play. So explain it to me. Well, yes, he overthought it. He definitely overthought it. There's no doubt about that. So he looked at their back line. Now, he actually owned up to it after the game. But I'm sitting, I was sitting beside Chris Waddle watching the game. And we were trying to figure out beforehand, is he going to go three at the back? And then, yeah, well... So he's trying to second guess him. Right, so you, because you, your, your defenders are slow, right? By the way, and that's nobody's fault but your own. If you spend 350 million quid in defenders, that's nobody else's fault, right? But you think, oh, kind of get it, kind of get it. And then you can play wing backs, and if you look at the opposition, Leon have got kind of decent ish wing backs that get up there, and you think, yeah, I can kind of see it. And then you go and put two sitting midfielders, and you go, well, no, that's just too far. That's just too far. Mm. What are you doing? You're putting double cover in front of three centre backs. Now, this is the big thing, right? See if you're doing, um, you, you're analysing football, right? Just because it happens to be Pep or one of the great names, you've got to blank it. You've got to blank it. You've got to say, no. If he's doing something that looks wrong, you've got to say, I think that looks really wrong. And I'll tell you, 15, 20 minutes, Chris Waddle and I are going, that's a shambles. Mm. That is a mess. And we would just please change it. And I'm saying, we'll get immediately, I, I know who you, you need to get Fernandinho off. Just get him off now. You can bring on, you know, you're one of the Silvers, you know, definitely Mares or whatever. But you can do that. That's 15 minutes in, right? Pep does it after, is it 60? And you're thinking, well, if it's right, it's 60. We're definitely right at 15, 20. 
you know, our, our adaptive system, it ain't working. And he has over, and I, we've all played, every player's played under managers that overthought it. Do you know, quite often the ones that do it are international managers, because they sit there and they chin stroke for like two months between games, mm. and they overthink it. And you're right, your kit, you got to a point there where Pep's thinking the Champions League as almost like international, it's totally different from everything else. So he thinks about it differently. Don't, you're absolutely right, just don't. Just go and play your game. Impose yourself in the opposition. And there's a psycho psycho psychology that a player feels. You go out and then you look and you think, actually, they're not as confident. You feel it on the pitch. Or the manager's put out that team and you go, yee And honestly, the Leon must have thought that right from the beginning. And the, the big disappointment for Pep's brilliance in so many ways, why didn't you see it? Or did you see it? And were you just too cussed not to change it? Mm. And there's a bit of you that thinks that, isn't there? That everyone can see this. I mean, everyone, I'm sure you, did you, you saw that and thought, well, that's not working. You know, so we can all see it. And he still won't change it. Six, was it 55, 56, whatever it is, minutes, he changes it. They then score mm. and then control the game. Now, it gets weird after that, mm. but what a, now the only argument I can give for him is it was about two or three minutes in the game, there was a break in that inside right position for Leon. And I, I went, whoa, they are, they are stuff for pace. They have nothing like the pace of the opposition here. So I can kind of see why he did it. But that also goes back to you spent 300 million quid or over 300 million quid in defenders. you got to have somebody that's a bit quick. And if you come up with all these ideas, all right, we're stuff for pace. Okay, we'll move Kyle Walker. And he sent him back there. You know, if it's just pace you're worried about, like, stick him there. You'll be fine. Mm. But he didn't seem to do anything. It was, it was very, very weird to sit and allow what Man City are good at not to happen at all. Yeah, it's quite damning, really. It's weird when you just look at the match, and then it's weird when, as you say, he spent oh, 200 million plus on defenders, and this is what he's ended up with, you know? And you've John Stone sitting there, and he's been celebrated, Pep, for the way he's improved Raheem Sterling and can't seem to get John Stones to a level. You feel John Stones can't be a million miles off. And we had Kenny Cunningham on yesterday, and he was talking about just the instincts of Garcia, who, you know, ball played over the top for the first goal under no pressure, and Garcia, you know, comes up and is flat-footed as opposed to, you know, going back towards goal, or then... Kyle Walker doesn't react like Corne is behind him as the play begins and Garcia makes the tackle and Corne suddenly is however many yards ahead of Walker who and, and then Walker thinks, oh God, maybe there's trouble here. And you look at all those odd instincts, be it Garcia, be it Walker and, and just City generally defensively and the money spent combined with the lack of improvement in their defence and that is very damning of Pep as well. You know, we, we're, we're pitching this guy as potentially and probably the best coach in the world and that's where we are four years in. See, the instinct thing that yourself and Kenny were talking about, mm. it's absolutely nailed on, and it gets to the core of it. Do you think when Pep Guardiola goes out to buy a defender, he thinks about the defending first? Or does he think, how good are you on the ball? And how good are you passing out and playing for the back? What's, what's A on his mind and what's B? And I think we all know what A and B is. He wants... I mean, uh, once again, some of them didn't look bad. Mendel looked like a great signing, but he just went backwards, you know. Stones looked to be really improving for a while, and then he just dropped him completely. Um, even Nathan Aki, almost the perfect one, you know, he is lovely on the ball. He's a, he's a very, very strong centre back. Can we tell you something else about Nathan? He's not, he's not quick. <laughs> he's just gone and bought another one. And I really like Nathan. I mean, really like him. I think he's great, but I really like him. But he's bought another one that isn't quick. <laughs> you just think, you've done that again. You've just walked into it again, and have somebody like Nathan Aki, but have a lightning quickie bit beside him, and that's absolutely fine. So, you know, I, I do think it's what you're saying. I think it's that concept of, right, they, they don't think that way because he's trying to buy football and not defenders. And there's a bit of me that kind of wants them to do that. Mm. But they, they've got to be able to do it. And then when you don't believe in them, you then just do the oldest one in the book, which, and the oldest one in the book is, if you're two cent and a half sounds good enough, you put another one in there as well. It's, it, it sounds more complicated, but it isn't. That's what they do, and that's what he tried to do. And it still didn't work. And mm. also, you're playing a high line. Mm. And you're playing a high line against people that are quick. You just, what? Mm. This is kind of basic stuff. It makes next season very, very important for him. 
and for how his regime will be remembered. Let's move on to Barcelona. It's just extraordinary. So I mentioned Kenny Cunningham was on the show yesterday and I asked him to try and analyse Barcelona. You're going to have to help me out here because as, you as you'll hear, Kenny doesn't even know where to start with this absolute mess. Have a listen. It's hard to think of an analogy like... Um, do you know, I remember once when I was growing up, somebody having dinner... Oh, there was a tro I was in my ma or somebody. Somebody was walking with a trifle over the, across the floor to the table. Everybody's waiting for this trifle. So anyway, tripped up. The trifle hits the ground. So it's picked up. You know, you pick it up in scoopfuls and you slap it back <laughs> into the bowl and you come over and you present it. You put it on the table and you're just... Everybody's looking into this bowl thinking, oh... Oh, no, that's, that's an absolute mess. I don't want any part of this. Pat and Evan, analyse this trifle which has flown everywhere. Um, I love it. <laughs> I, love that. I love that analogy. It's damn good because the, the mess that it is is <laughs> totally unpalatable. Everybody looking at it, and I suppose part of it, people don't actually want to say it's a mess. That's another part of it, because it is a mess. Mm. And people are going, yeah, but it's trifle or it's Barcelona, and it, <laughs> but it's a shambles. It's a complete mess. And uh, I was just I was so, honestly, I don't know where to start on it, because I mean, I'm upset. I should not bother and angry about it, because they were my dream. Barcelona were, and many other people's dream, they, what they did for that period of time. But that is now a long time ago. That is now in the past. Mm. Not maybe that miles in the past, and I'll not come back. Certainly not with this group of players anyway. But some of the attitudes of some of the players that that really, really angered me. Messi included. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Walking about, you know, and some of it, it, quite clearly the, the players have got too much drink there. Quite clearly, um, and to be honest, he's probably intelligent enough to get you know, you know, I could run about like a lunatic all day today. It won't make any difference. It's not going to win the game, like, because there's so many things wrong. Um, watching it, and it's how saddening to see. Suarez scored a great goal, but everybody knows he's too slow. Mm. For that level, he's too slow. You, you just, you, you're not going to be good enough at that level now. So if you want to be Barcelona and be one of the best in the world, you that's gone now. He looks a wee bit podgy, even. Like, so he has for a few years. Could, yeah. It's kind of weird that he, he gets away with because... Your team are controlling things and that, but when it falls off that cliff, that's a big old drop and it's a quick drop. And it, they've had it now. Some of the attitudes, I mean, sometimes you watch a player and you're looking at certain players who are working hard and you're thinking, you're working hard, but you're now beginning to look stupid because the guy beside you isn't. Mm. And the one that was really getting the man, really getting, well, there was two actually. Um, Vidal, that was it. I told him Vidal. He did that classic thing that he goes and chases a ball, you're about 6-2 down or whatever it is, right? He goes and chases a ball, and he runs over and he tries to dive in the tackle, which is the laziest thing in the world to do. You've got a number of fans, or fans that are watching from the telly this time going, yeah, he's trying. No, you're not. What you're doing is diving in so you don't have to do your half yards back. Mm. Every player knows it. You've just thrown yourself in there. Then he goes and starts shouting at the referee, trying to get sent off so that he can say, I cared. Mm. And it's absolute garbage. Utter garbage. It was infuriating. Do you know what it is, Arthur? You're miles too slow for that. You, you've just not got, for that level, you're miles and miles away from it. Right, so, by the way, you notice I'm not mentioning the, the manager here. There's nothing got to do with the coach. Mm. This is there's nothing got to do with him at all. Mm. This is much, much deeper. This is completely out of the And there was just so many attitudes with so many players that really annoyed me. And I could go through it and go, um, was it Roberto, 20? Oh, honestly. The arrogance of the man during the game was beyond me. I'm thinking, don't be arrogant when you're 8-2 down, mate. Don't be arrogant. Well, he wasn't 8 he got substituted at some point. But don't be arrogant when you're getting battered like this. Don't walk about with that attitude. Get your head down and work and at least try for your teammates. But it is a classic one that's where they used to be the perfect, intricate, clockwork team, everybody working together. Nobody worked together. Absolutely nobody worked and together. And doesn't that stem uh, quite probably from the leader of the group and the club ultimately, in, in most respects, Messi? And so this is how he behaves. And uh, for a time, you know, you dispensation to do it because he's so talented and others could make up for it. But gradually, as they've aged, more and more have kind of jumped ship into his camp and they're not working hard. And there is also, you know, tied in with that. And this is the other point I want to ask you about. The 900 million now famously spent since 2015 and even the 350 million spent on 
Griezmann, Coutinho and Dembele from Friday, two of them on the bench, the other scoring against Barcelona. Uh, there, there is a lingering suspicion increasingly that uh, really good players are being signed to Barcelona and unless you know Messi and his group feel you have Barcelona in your DNA, I wonder how hospitable it is, I wonder how much you're welcomed, I wonder how much you're, you're encouraged to really blossom or take ownership of the team. Uh, it, it can't just be that all these, you know, Griezmann is still a fine player. It can't just be, oh, he wasn't suited to our style of play and either was Coutinho and someone else isn't suited, someone else isn't suited. Like, we're done 29 players since 2015 and the, the feeling is not one of them has been a success. The, 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 the bottom line then is, to link those two points together, Messi, understandably, has too much influence in this dressing room and therefore we're not seeing a team working hard and we're seeing a little, a group who uh, don't run around and rule the dressing room and the new arrivals aren't exactly given a chance to blossom or take over. And, th and that is a major issue now that the new manager in Koeman needs to get to grips with somehow. And on top of that, you would add the fact that those older players actually in themselves are not aware of the fact that that is the problem. Do you not think so? They will, no, no, they look at the young players here, oh, they're not as good as us. They're not as good as us. Uh, they're not, we've won all these championships. And what they forget is that's past tense. They forget that. They just blank that. We did this. We did this. They still, because you've got this mindset where you are, you must feel you are the best. You won't get anywhere in the top level of football unless you feel that. Yeah. So they'll still feel that, even though they're 32, 33, 34, whatever, and slowing down, etc. They will blame it on everybody else. Everybody else. Now, you know, I'm not pointing it directly only at Messi. It must be a hell of a hard if you are that talented and nobody else is close to you. Mm. And the ones that are coming in, are you feel, are even further away. Because you could look at Xavi and you could look at Iniesta and think, yeah, you're at kind of my level. You're okay. You know, and certainly he's felt if you are, same about Neymar, I think, as well. Mm. You know, you're at kind of my level. You can do that. But the rest of them will just go, nah. You know, and it's, and you can understand that if you try and put his point of view, you know, look at his point of view, he will think along those lines. The thing is you can't do that on a football team. Eventually, you need to get a football team that, as a team. Um, and the, the classic one, go back to the last number of years, I'm sure I've told you this before, I'm sure most people know it, the two players over the last number of years that do the least amount of running in the Champions League, and it's by a million miles, it's Ronaldo and it's Messi. They don't run. Right? So they better keep on being unbelievably brilliant because you can't play with 10 men mm. uh, unless they are unbelievably brilliant now and again. The thing is, they both were for periods of time, mm. but it doesn't last forever. And certainly just looking at it there. And I think if you, and I don't know if it's Messi's gang, I'm not in that tradition, I don't know. And, but, and I don't want to believe it's that. But there is certainly a core group. And that core group, if you're in their gang, it's almost as if you're in the kind of, you don't need to try too hard. You're certain. And I know this, I've played in teams like this, where they were a wee bit are quite successful beforehand. And then they spend their time just snarling at the younger ones, and you're thinking, "Yeah, but you can't run, mate." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, it's, and it happens. It's so so common. It's happened to me at international football, and it's happened to me in club football as well, in the top level. So it happens all the time. Mm. This isn't just Barcelona. You need to have the strength of, of a manager who can actually change it, who's not only got the bravery to change it, but who's actually got the backing to change it. Mm. And as we all get back in, and you know fine well, we all know fine well. Nobody's had that for a long time at Barca. Mm. Before you go, Manchester United. Yeah, I've sat, felt a wee bit sorry for them. The way they, they didn't actually play that badly, did they? they, they certainly after half time, they had a, a right good chance. Um, you, they could have gone ahead, got a couple of goals there, and you know everyone have, would have been looking at it in a different way. Um, a wee bit disappointed that they did run out of legs, you know, and that was maybe a surprise to me. I mean, I'd certainly watched. Uh, Seville against Wolves I'd been covering that game and I, I thought Man United would have plenty for them, I, I just thought they'd hammer them they'd get lots of chances and they would certainly score well they did get a load of chances they just didn't score enough um, there was one big bit that jumped out at me and we're back on defenders again um, you need to remind me who it was, ball played across for the, the second goal the second uh, the two centre backs. Lind two centre well, li it was Lindelof who Lind kind of Lindelof. It dropped off Lindelof. Lindelof. Oh, sorry, I, I thought Lindelof, I mean, he could have done a bit better, but it's all on Basaka, no? Uh, Lindelof's got to look. <laughs> Does Bissaka's he? Not, 
Yeah, he's got to work. But can Pasaka not well, see everything? Well, see if you're Maguire and you're not really marking anybody and you and Lindelof's got Maguire in front of him. Mm. You think, well, you've not got anybody and I've not got anyone. I should really have a wee look around here. You're talking about natural defenders. They go, whoa, oh, oh, alarm bells. You look around mm. immediately. Mm. So Pasaka should have covered around, maybe shouted and all that sort of thing. But when Lindelof is having a go at uh, Bruno Fernandes afterwards, they're having a shout and a ball. Yeah. I'm with Fernandes in that one. Oh, were you? I, well, sorry, that's so interesting. Earlier, I was jumping to the defence of Lindelof. I was saying, look, surely the rule is, yeah, I take your point, he should have looked. But ultimately, ultimately, if you've got Pasaka behind you and a man in between the two of you, it is 98% on Pasaka. No, I wouldn't say 98%. I would maybe give you 50. I'd maybe give you 50. <laughs> Because you're a centre back, and that's where the goals go in. The goals go in at centre backs. You're always looking. You're always okay. there. If you don't look there and expect everyone else to cover everything, I mean, any sort of midfielders can come in there. No, it's true. Any sort of wingers can come in. And all sorts of people kind of got to look. And if you don't, and he never did at any point, he never did at any point. And if he had a man, if he's got a man beside him, I'm I'm letting him off of that completely. Yeah. So. Is it, no, so we all made mistakes, and that's fine, and that's okay. But the fact that he um, he made the mistake and then argued that he didn't make a mistake, and I'm going, no, don't do that. You're well, just... you'd be Bruno getting up in his grill. It's like you you stay out of it. I mean, if you feel that badly about it, you track back. But uh, okay, well that's very, that's very interesting. So if Lindelof had at least looked, you'd have given him more of a pass because that would have shown the right instinct. Yeah, if it looks and he doesn't get him, or he gets done with a good bit of forward then back movement, then you yeah. can't get it. But at no point, he just keeps on looking at the ball the whole time. And if he's looking at the ball over there, and between him and the ball, as his other centre-half mate, who's not going to really got anyone either, mm. alarm bells, you kind of... And it's what you say about defenders. It should, it's this natural instinct to defend. Kenny would have been shouting about it. He'd have been, he'd have been yeah. having custard over the walls in that one. Yeah, the trifle, I mean, with the least of his worries at that stage. Uh, OK, so look, on we march. We've got semi-finals this week. And uh, well, the next time we talk, we'll have a Champions League final to talk about. So we'll see you next Monday. Looking forward to it. It should yes. be good. Then. We never even mentioned Bayern. I know. Well, listen, I suspect we, we, well. we, we, may, we well. may be mentioning them next week. Pat and Evan, thanks very much. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power. More confident than United before a Europa League final. Gamble responsibly. See Dunleary.net. The Future Proof Podcast. Take a long look in the mirror. You might see something you've been missing for years. No, 